So welcome back to brand new episode of the Toronto Blue Jays franchise mode here in MLB The Show 16. So today we have a big matchup between the Toronto Blue Jays and the Boston Red Sox. So I played a game early in the series, I think it was the first game of the series. It was the home opener, we obviously won that one, but we lost the next one. And now today is a big matchup between Ari Dickey and David Price. The big storyline is basically David Price last season was traded to the Blue Jays from the Tigers. I Anthopolis acquired him on the trade deadline. It was probably one of the better trades that Anthopolis made this uh, that last year after he acquired Tulo. But David Price, he led the Blue Jays into the playoffs, but he choked tremendously and was one of the reasons why the Blue Jays did not make it past the, the Royals and the ALCS. But it's a big storyline today as the Boston Red Sox signed David Price in the free agency last offseason. And now he's a starting pitcher, the air ace for them their team this season but Ari Dickey gets to start for us today and he's a pretty special pitcher he could pitch, pitch that knuckleball very well and but everyone knows that knuckleball could be a home run maker and this knuckleball is not very good or really reliable at all too much it could strike players out a lot but most of the time it's a home run ball or they just get on base constantly but we'll have to watch for that today as Ari Dickey is taking the mound as our starter. But obviously our lineup is the same as always as there's no injuries so far. Which I'm very proud of because I thought for sure there'd be at least one injury so far. But right when I said that home run, that knuckleball was a home run ball. There it is. Our first home run of the game. And the Boston Red Sox are up 2-0 against the Toronto Blue Jays. Mookie, Bo Mookie Betts hits that one deep. I didn't see that one fall down at all, but that was a no-doubter, absolutely crushed by Mookie Betts. I didn't know Mookie Betts even had that much power in him. He has such a small frame, yet he can do so much damage. It's so It's really good. I need one of those players in the Blue Jays. You have a guy like Devin Travis who could probably do that. Never really know if he'll homer or not, but there's Mookie Betts going yard. That thing is gone for days, gone forever, as everyone always says. But Ari Dickey, he needs to bounce back from that. Otherwise, it's going to be a very long day for Ray Dickey. It's already in the first inning. He's allowed two runs. You can't really get much better worse than that. But we finally finish off the inning as it skies out to Michael Saunders. And he makes that catch. But David Price takes the mound to start against the Toronto Blue Jays. His former team. Everyone loved him here. I remember right when the Blue Jays acquired him. They were trying to get a whole bunch of popcorn to him. Because he loves popcorn. The Rogers Center popcorn. So at least today, going back to Rogers Center and going gets some more of that fresh Rogers Center popcorn. And hopefully make him play bad, but he strikes out Kevin Pillar. Got him looking right there and his first half out of the day. Our leadoff man not getting on base. That's something we need a lot, but there's Donaldson going down. Another strike for David Price. The second of the day. One up, one down, and two up, two down after that. But Colabello's up to play, and he's heading in high and deep. Get back, get up, but it just drops down. And he's running for that stand-up double. A hardy cut by Chris Colabello, and that get their lands right in that gap between center field and right field. That was a beautiful hit by Chris Colabello. Chris Colabello in real life can hit home runs. He did a lot last season for the Blue Jays. I hope he does a lot this season for the Blue Jays. But in real life, I'm pretty sure Chris Colabello will be starting at first base ahead of Do Edwin because Edwin is more of a DH than he ever was at first base. Same like in this game. Edwin's speed is so slow, but Chris Colabello is really, really, rely ah, really reliable in this odd game. He's really fast, he can hit the ball right, his contact is just perfect for me to play as him in this game. Probably one of the better players, but there is, we finally get a single right down the middle, but it's not a single. As we get the out right there, David Price retires aside, still 2-0 Boston in the bottom of the second, but Ari Dickey finally gets his first strike out of the game, a perfect knuckleball, working to perfection right there for Ari Dickey, at least I think that was a knuckleball, but he finally gets his first strikeout of the game, and I'm surprised Dickey even got a strikeout. In this game, his overall is going to plummet after these first few games, as we all know, Ari Dickey's 41 years old, defying gravity right there, as he finally gets a whole bunch of strikes. I don't know how Ari, Ari Dickey even got these strikes, but the, play, the umpire is really kind to him as he strikes out Hanley Ramirez right there to end the side. I swear, I swear Ari Dickey must have went to high school with this umpire because this ump was giving him the calls all day long. If it was right, if it was just hitting the strike zone, it didn't matter. The ump was going to call it a strike. 
So I'm pretty sure the Ump and Ari Dickey went to high school or something. They have some type of connection, but on this play, Kevin Pillar hits it right down center field, and he's on base for the first time today. Kevin Pillar is our leadoff man, and we need that in him today in order to finally beat these pesky Boston Red Sox. The Red Sox have a great lineup, and I'm surprised. I'm not surprised they're up 2-0 early on the Jays, especially with Ari Dickey pitching. Ari Dickey is not really reliable at all, but Josh Donaldson up the bat, and he strikes out again. I'm sorry, but I cannot play well with Josh Donaldson. I have no idea why. They seem to take way more risks with him and strike out all the time. It sucks, but I'm on all-star bat pitching and batting, so it's going to happen every once in a while. But there's... I still can't believe David Ortiz. One speed in that game. Did you see that? He checked on first third base right there. All right, all right, me not. David Ortiz, one speed in the game. But there it is. We finally get the out, and we finally retire the side against the Red Sox. We didn't allow any runs, but they still, they have four hits on the day. So far, we only have two. We need to extend that. But they're right there. Edwin gets that single right in that gap. They shifted their outfield, and that was not the right thing to do as a shortstop. And the second baseman was not there to make that play. Dustin Pedroia would have made that play any day of the week, though. Pedroia in this game is actually really good, though. He can dive and make almost any catch, but not there. His defensive positioning was just not there. But during this entire game, if you look, that middle is wide open every play. But... I was saying to myself, don't hit a double play, but I hit myself in a double play with Tulo right there. Fluitsky, for some reason, is not playing well early in the season, but you can't really judge a man on his posi on his performance early in the season. Heck, a player could play good for 20 games and just play like trash for the rest of the season, but play doesn't happen this season. But this is high and deep, but Ozzy Batista makes the spectacular catch. Almost a full left extension in his left arm, but Ozzy Batista, a wonderful outfielder. And that's one of the perks of having a veteran outfielder out there in right field. Jose Batista making that spectacular catch. Couldn't believe it, but they obviously get the single in Ray Dickey there, and they have a man on base at first. Ray Dickey lets up so many singles, but you gotta play good defense against Ray, Dick Ray Dickey, or you're gonna get killed. But there he is. They finally sky one right in that gap in center field, and they're gonna have a man on third and on second. We just about almost pick him off there, but didn't work out. So they have a man on third and second in scoring position. They can easily score some runs right here, but they we, they ground out to Ari Dickey, and he just throws it to first base to end the inning. A perfect display of just unrelentless ability by Ari Dickey as he finally just gets those outs. But we're back to Ari Dickey pitching again, and he's hitting those those corners, those knuckleballs, and those changeups. And he is going to get that strike out there, striking out him with that fastball. His four-seam fastball is perfect today. Just striking out everybody. All right, Dickey played very well after allowing two runs in that first inning. But he obviously grounds out to Josh Donaldson and goes to Chris Colabello for that out right there. And there's Sandoval wobbling over the dugout after getting out at first. He is so big. I swear Boston has one of the fattest lineups in the league. Sorry to say, but Sandoval, Ortiz just weighing down the lineup there. They're really good players, but pretty slow but Jose Batista he was slow on that one as he just cuts at that one just end this ending right there six hits for Boston four hits for us but we're bringing in lefty Brett Cecil I swear it's his second appearance of the season for us in these videos but he walks the first battery sees you can't be doing that Brett Cecil you can't be you, that's one thing you cannot do is walk batters constantly but he goes and he's gonna go and rel unrelentlessly strike out the player right there. I think that was Xander Bogarts, but he strikes him out, and now is his first strike out of the game for Brett Cecil. Brett Cecil is a great pitcher in real life and on this game. In real life, I couldn't believe when he got injured in the playoffs. It basically screwed over the Jays because Brett Cecil was one of the Jays' only good relievers. Same with Aaron Sanchez, but he strikes out a second batter in the inning. Brett Cecil getting strikeouts like crazy in this game, but Brett Cecil back to him. He was. At once he got injured last season in the postseason, I knew that the Jays were going to be done. But on this play, Tulowitzki gets the ball and he's going to throw it to first and get that out. It was so close. Pitch perfect play by Troy Tulowitzki, that nice hand. No one's going to be trend. Tulo's glove isn't going to be trending again this offseason as his glove is perfect. But we kept popping it up every play. It was getting so ticked off because every play I'd either pop it up or ground out to Dustin Pedroia to get that out at first, but I don't know. I just got to come back somehow in this game, but Aaron Loop, we're bringing him in, and he throws 
That strikeout right there against Hanley Ramirez. He, Hanley Ramirez cannot believe it. Darren Loop strikes him out right there. But we let up a hit right down the middle. But to David Ortiz, big poppy. Last season in the, in, last season in the MLB. And he's going to have a great one. But David Ortiz makes it to second base as we they get another base hit. The defensive fielding was not positioned well right there as we cannot make the play. But it's good to ground it to Donaldson. To, one, to the second baseman, to the first baseman, Chris Caldwell, and we get the double play. We turn it using Josh Donaldson's amazing defensive ability right there. A beautiful play by Josh Donaldson, Devin, Devin Travis, and Chris Caldwell to end that inning. It was so close. We could have blew it right there and made allowed more runs. But Russell Martin up to bat, and somehow Pablo Sandoval defies gravity, somehow lifting his body to make that catch. I didn't know how Pablo Sandoval can even jump. Look at that. Just a fine gravity right there. Insanely good play by Pablo Sandoval. But he somehow gets that right there. But Devin Travis, no doubter to left center field. And it is gone. A 2-1 game for us in the top of the eighth. Devin Travis, amazing hit right there. I was saying earlier that Mookie Betts somehow made a home run. Got that home run right there. Devin Travis somehow got that home run right there. He's got such a small build, but... So much power in Devin Travis. That's one reason why we got to keep him up in MLB. A great second baseman. He's a young, 25 years old. I think he's around 80 overall, but he's playing fantastic for the Jays so far. He's a great player to use. He's speedy. He can get home runs. He's great defense. It's everything you want in a second baseman, which is Devin Travis. Devin Travis looks like he's going to beat up. Ryan Goins has basically no chance of coming back to the MLB if Devin Travis continues his reign of terror, just dropping the bat right there. I thought he was going to do a bat flip, but nah, that's but good enough. Got to keep looking at some more angles of this. Just dropping the bat right there. Who needs a bat flip? We're going to just drop it. Perfect play by Devin Travis, but Devin Travis in real life, I remember he got injured early last season, and I was so upset because he's playing very well. I think at the Jays' first home run last season, but Tulo's up the bat, Michael Sanders up the bat, and he strikes out. We can't, we don't need that right now. You don't need Michael Saunders striking out, and Kevin Pillar does the exact same as if they retire the side. But it's going to the top of ninth. We're bringing in our righty, Drew Storen. He's a closer, but we converted him to relief after Roberto Osuna was announced as a closer in real life. But he strikes out the first batter he sees, and now there's one down in the top of the ninth. We need to keep this lead right now. We need to keep this at a small lead for the Boston Red Sox, but he had a single right there, right down the middle, and we cannot allow any more men on base. We cannot do that. But Drew Storm walks the next batter. Xander Bogarts takes his base, and now his base is loaded for Hanley Ramirez. He's 0-4 in the game. Can he get a hit? And he does, and it's high and deep. Get up, get up, get up. Michael Saunders makes that catch right there. A beautiful catch by Michael Saunders, and he gets Drew Storm out of that rut. That he made, but the Boston Red Sox 10 hits in the inning. But they have Craig Kimbrell coming in, the 93 overall closer. He is one of the best closers in the game, and you have no chance of getting anything against him as Donaldson just watches and strike him out right there. One man down, and Jose Bautista is coming up to play. A big monster home run hitter, Jose Bautista. He hit that bat flip against the Rangers. He hit it again. No doubter by Jose Bautista, high and deep, left center field, and it is gone. A tie game here in the top of the bottom of the ninth. A perfect play by Jose Bautista, very clutch. And now it is a tie game here in Toronto. Just clutch. I don't know how Craig Kimbrell even allowed that home run. You think Craig Kimbrell would allow? Wouldn't allow anything. He's one of the best closers in the game, and he's leading the league and saves. I'm pretty sure, but. Jose Batista somehow gets that solo shot off him. I didn't even know we could come back from this. Ari Dickey allows a two-run home run in the first and nothing since. But somehow he came back with Devin Travis's home run and Jose Batista's home run. And now it is a tie game. But we got to keep looking at this. I thought for sure this would be a bat flip of a moment, but I guess if it was a walk-off it would have been. But Jose Batista just drops that bat just like Devin Travis. And now it's a tie game. We got to keep looking at some more angles of this. Just a beautiful play by Jose Batista. I just thought for sure he's gonna bat flip it, but nope. No bat flip for him. But Keg Krimble, visibly upset right there after allowing that home run. He thought he had that save in the books, but 
he blew that save, and I like seeing good pitchers blow saves. I don't know why, but you just want to see that. You want to see them fail even though they're good, but Tulowitzki, he strikes out, and we're going to extra innings here in Toronto. We really need to win this one. Hopefully we can. If we win this one, that's good. We Somehow we'd win this. If we somehow win this one, it'd be amazing. But Roberto Osuna comes in for us, and he needs to not allow any runs. But somehow David Ortiz, he hits it to third base, and it bounces off the third base into the air, and he takes first. How the heck did that even happen? Did you see that? It somehow ground, like, rolls over to the first ba third base, and it bounces way up in the air. I've never ever seen that before, ever, ever. But somehow that works for David Ortiz. David Ortiz can make anything happen, that shows right there, but right there, Russell Martin gets the ball, but he goes and he throws it to second base. And we don't get the out at second with David Ortiz. I don't know why he did that, that was the worst mistake ever, but they sky out to Kevin Pilar. And now David Ortiz retreats back to second base. Big poppy on second base, they cannot drive him home right here, but Henley Ramirez grounds out. We're gonna dodge trying to get a double play right here, but we don't get Justin Pedroia out. So close. There's two outs. A man on third, David Ortiz, but they hit it down the middle. And that's gonna drive in drive in Big Poppy to home plate. 3-2 game for Boston. I am so pissed off at this point. You did not want to see me during this gameplay, but they're gonna go and sky out deep to center field. And obviously Kevin Pilar is gonna make that catch any day of the week. And now we're heading to the bottom on the 10th inning. We really need to go and tie this game up. They have 12 hits, we have 6. We're not been playing well at the bat today. But Chris Colabo strikes out against a new pitcher in the game. I don't know who that was, but he somehow strikes out Chris Colabello. And on this play, Russell Martin, it's ruled that he goes around. I don't know if he really went around. I'd challenge that, but we lost our challenge early, early in the game. Somehow, I don't know why. But Devin Travis is up to play. Two outs. And he strikes out. Devin Travis strikes out. And the game is over. We lose 3-2 against the division rival Boston Red Sox. I was so ticked off at this point. But we lose this game. It was a close one. We somehow came back from a 2-0 deficit in the top of the 8th. Make it 2-1. And then Jose Batista hit that clutch home run. In the bottom of the ninth to tie it up. We blew it in the top of the 10th. And that one error we made. At least I made. But they obviously get the win here today. David Price. But the Boston Red Sox. They're going to leave Toronto winning the series. Jose Batista was our top hitter, hitting one home run, obviously getting that one RBI and four at-bats. Mookie Betts is our top hitter, hitting two hits and one home run, which includes two RBIs. And that basically is the episode, so make sure to like and subscribe for more Toronto Blue Jays franchise mode. And thanks for watching, and I will see you later.